Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's the part out of all of this that is causing one of the biggest controversies I've ever seen in the history of college football. What are we doing? This doesn't even sound good. Two or three months ago, I made a video in which I stated the Pac-12 is going to crumble like a cookie, and I might have been understating it. So yesterday was a really interesting day in the college football world, especially if you care about the conference realignment stuff that's currently unfolding. As we all know, Colorado, they already announced it. Hey, we're leaving the Pac-12. There's rumors fluctuating that Florida State, the Cinnamon Rolls, and Clemson, they want to leave the ACC. And also the biggest rumors that we're about to get into is that Oregon, Washington, Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah, well, it's up in the air. They don't know exactly what they want to do. Oregon and Washington, they want to go to the Big Ten, but the Big Ten doesn't want them. And then the Big 12 won't see schools, but at the same time, these same schools are going to hear out offers from the Pac-12. But with that being said, yesterday, there was a very, and I mean a very important meeting yesterday in the Pac-12. And this meeting was to discuss the biggest thing out of all of this, the TV deal. And we're going to talk about that on today's video, and it is mind-boggling to say the least. I'll put it this way, it's extremely difficult for me to even fathom the thought that a Power 5 conference is even going to attempt this. And it goes back to this, we made videos on this months ago. I told you the Pac-12 is falling apart, and this is the main reason why. This right here is a perfect representation of why these teams are wanting to leave. I don't think I need to hype this one up anymore. It is a fascinating subject to say the least. And also, we got some other minor topics to speak on, including college football players and quarterbacks gambling on games? What's going on with that? Well, we're going to find out. I've had so many people send me that. We'll talk about that real briefly. As always, if you're new to the channel, consider joining our amazing community. If you don't want to join, well, that's cool too. Ain't no big deal. All right, Matt, blah, 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 crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get in. First things first, people want me to talk about this, and you know, you boy Matt, I'm a fan of the people, I'm gonna give the people what they want, but at the end of the day, there's not too much to say. I mean, are you shocked about this? News came out yesterday that Iowa State quarterback Hunter Decker, never heard of him, was betting on college football, including Iowa State games. He placed a whopping total of 366 wagers, that's a lot, and he wagered in total $2,799, which to me is kind of low. I was assuming this guy bet at least $20,000 worth. But that's besides the point. The point is, he bet on games, and it's causing a big controversy. And let me make this clear. I'm not saying that nearly $2,800, that's not a lot of money, because, yeah, that's a lot of money. But what is that? I, can somebody do simple math for me? That's like, what, seven, eight? nine dollars a game just seems extremely low but like i was saying matt gonna move on that's besides the point the point is this is illegal but at the end of the day i'm gonna ask you guys a question please let me know in the comment section do you really think this is the only college football player doing this because i don't guys like to bet not just on football but in anything and everything in life i guess people want me to come up here and say oh man this is terrible for the sport this kid has no morals no integrity but to me it's not a big deal a lot of people bet. Think about it. Whenever we're watching college football and NFL, that's all we see is all these betting apps and all these ads and stuff like that. So that's all there is to it. I don't think it's a big deal. Let me know your thoughts down below. Me personally, I'm not a betting man. But a lot of people out here, they are. So it is what it is. We gotta get a move on. Our second topic we're going to speak about is that we got some breaking news. Gary has informed MBG, not me, the real MBG, but the message board that Clemson is a done deal to the Big Ten. So somebody put on this message board yesterday, heard it directly from Gary. We're going to the Big Ten. Press is embargoed with the news until 3 p.m., but it's done. No other details yet. And this was yesterday, by the way. Now, obviously, if you can't tell, this is a complete joke. It's just so funny to me. You have people saying, oh, yeah, I got this one source named Gary. He is actually confirmed firm that Clemson will be in the Big Ten by tomorrow. Like, come on, man, what are we doing? But on a serious note, and I do want to speak on this real briefly, if Clemson and Florida State do leave the ACC, which, by the way, they're trying to do, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Mark this down. They will leave, but I don't know when. They're in a sticky situation because of their grant of rights contract, and they really don't want to break that. Because if they do break it, they're going to be $30 million in the hole every single year. Me personally, I've already told you guys this, I would try to break it, but it doesn't look like these schools are going to anytime soon. And plus, they don't really need to. We'll see what happens there. But now, finally, moving on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video. What in the world is going on in the Pac-12? We're just going to get straight into this, so if you're not locking in and paying attention, you need to right now, because if you miss a single second of what I'm about to say, you will be lost. Jumping straight into it, one of my best sources, one of my most reliable sources, Bretman Murphy, tweeted out this. 
The Pac-12 board meeting with presidents and athletic directors about media rights deal concludes with no deal reached. That is all you need to know. They met yesterday with all the athletic directors and all the presidents, all those higher up people, and no deal was reached. They will continue to meet over the next several weeks, but that's all you need to know right now. That is the major detail. But let's dive a little deeper into this. Why was no deal reached? Not reaching a deal was a pretty bad sign, and I'll explain why. Because if you don't reach a deal, all these other teams like, I'd say, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Oregon, Washington, they're like, well, if we can't reach a deal now, we're going to try to go elsewhere. Whereas if they could have reached a deal, they would have been more likely to stay. You see what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's the part out of all of this that is causing one of the biggest controversies I've ever seen in the history of college football. And we really need to start calling it this. It's no longer the Pac-12 because three teams are already leaving. At this point in time, it's the Pac-9. You want to know what the Pac-12 is telling their current teams? Hey, we're not going to have a TV deal. We're going to have a streaming deal with Apple. I'm going to be honest. When I first heard this, I was like, what are we doing? This doesn't even sound good. I'm going to show you this word for word so you know exactly what's going on. After months of negotiations and uncertainty, the Pac-12 commissioner, George Cooley, I don't even know how to say his last name. I'm just going to say George, on Tuesday presented the conference presidents and chancellors with a potential primarily subscription-based Apple streaming deal for its television contract that expires after this school year. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Let's continue on. While several options were presented, the Apple streaming deal emerged as the likely leader at this point, bringing some clarity to a lengthy process that frustrated many within the league and ultimately played a role in Colorado's decision last week to join the Big 12. Monetary and exposure questions still loom, though, and outside pressure from the Big 12 remains. I'm gonna highlight that for y'all right here. Monetary and exposure questions still loom. Uh, yeah, you dang right they're gonna loom because not many people out in here are gonna pay to another service just to watch the Pac-12. I read the rest of this article, so you don't have to. It's a bunch of jibber-jabber, and the only other thing you need to know is that Apple TV, they've came out and said, yeah, in the first year we do this, we don't expect y'all to see good numbers, which for any team is concerning. I'll try to make a long story short here and dumb this down. Apple is telling, and the Pac-12 commissioner is telling all their teams, hey, when we do this Apple streaming deal, you probably won't make a lot of money. You'll probably make around 15, 20 million a year, but we're hoping in the long term wise, this is going to be great. Their biggest pitch to their teams is that, yeah, it's going to be hard to get going in this because it's going to be new to a lot of people. But once people get used to Apple TV and more people buy the subscription service in five, six, seven years, it's going to be right up there with the ACC and Big 12. The Pac-12 commissioner is hoping eventually they can get to where they can pay their teams the same amount that the Big 12 and ACC is currently paying their teams. But remember, that is the best case and scenario. And this is only possible if people pay the subscription service, which I don't think is going to happen. Greg Swain here broke this down pretty good, and I'll just show you his tweet. It's being anticipated, and we don't know, this isn't an exact number, but it's being anticipated that every school is going to be guaranteed around $19.5 million per year. That's kind of like your base salary, and then you can get commission on the subscriptions, if that makes sense. With all that information I've presented to you guys, let me give you my perspective on the situation because my perspective is very key because I'm a diehard college football fan. Me and you have a bigger play in this than what you actually think because we are the diehard fans. And this is how I feel about it. Right now, let's just say you had to pay $100 a year to subscribe to Apple TV to watch all the Pac-12 games. Would I, Matt be great, pay an extra $100 a year to watch all the Pac-12 games? No. I would not. With the current Pac-12 teams, there's no way. Remember, there's only nine teams remaining, and I ain't gonna hold you. The only Pac-12 teams I care about at this current moment in time is USC and Colorado. That's it. So no, I would not subscribe to Apple TV to even watch Oregon and Washington. I wouldn't. And I am a diehard college football fan. I'm just not going out of my way to buy another subscription service and download another app and do all that nonsense. I'm not. I'm not going to do it because the Pac-12 sucks. They're irrelevant. And remember Dan Lanning, what we talked about yesterday? What did he say about Colorado leaving? Oh, yeah, well, what did they ever do for the conference? They didn't win any games. Okay, well, we can play that same analogy for the college football playoff. What has the Pac-12 done for the college football playoff? They've never won anything. The Pac-12, or shall I say the Pac-9 at this current moment in time, once Colorado, UCLA, and USA leave, is irrelevant. And the problem is, if you're irrelevant and you're one of the least entertaining conferences out there, which the Pac-12 is, it's so unentertaining, it's laughable at times, 
you can't do a subscription service deal. You just can't do it. Not enough people are going to sign up. There's only two conferences at this current moment in time that could get away with a subscription service deal where people would pay for it. And that's the Big Ten and the SEC. I'm telling you right now, people in the Southeast wouldn't even flinch at paying $100 a year to watch all the SEC games. They wouldn't. Same thing for the Big Ten. I give the Big Ten a hard time, but I love their fans and I admire them because they love football just as much as us in the Southeast. The difference is, you want you go out West in the Pac-12, there's not diehard college football. Well, there is diehard college football fans, but there's not as much. We got plenty of diehard college football fans from out West that I see commenting on the videos all the time. Shout out to the Pac-12 fans, but it's not as frequent. Y'all get what I'm saying? I want you to really think about this. Me, as a diehard college football fan, I'm telling you, I wouldn't even sign up to watch Pac-12 games. I wouldn't even pay for a subscription service. So what do you think your casual fan's going to do? Well, if you don't know where I'm going with this, He's not going to sign up, or she isn't going to sign up. And I don't want to make this a Colorado and Dion thing, but I'm going to bring it up. If the Pac-12 kept Colorado, I would pay for it just to watch Colorado and Dion. But the fact you lost Dion, one of the most entertaining coaches out there, and now one of the most entertaining teams out there, no, I'm not paying for it. This is a dumb deal for any Pac-12 team. It's stupid because it's incentive-based. Two or three months ago, I made a video in which I stated the Pac-12 is going to crumble like a cookie, and I might have been understating it. That's all we know for now, though, and I don't expect to hear anything from the situation within the next couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months. There's a lot to this that they got to work out behind the scenes. Let me know your thoughts down below, but uh, roll a minute.